And the question says, arrange the bonds in increasing ionic character of the molecules. और अपने को कई सारे molecules दिए हैं. हमारे पास है LiF K2O. Then we have lovely nitrogen N2, SO2 and ClF3. There are five molecules and we are supposed to arrange them in the increasing order of ionic character. Well, if you just notice, this has metal and non-metal. This also has metal and non-metal. Metal plus non-metal, this means ionic bond. So these two bonds are predominantly ionic? Yes, they are predominantly ionic. And what about these? These are all non-metals. And when non-metal atoms combine with each other, the bonding is predominantly covalent. So these have to be predominantly covalent. And if they are more covalent, then naturally their ionic character would be much less. But would there be ionic character at all? Of course there would be. Why? Because the atoms which are joined to each other, like if you look at nitrogen, both the atoms are nitrogen atoms only. So this is purely covalent. This has 0% ionic character. So the minimum ionic character can be possessed by nitrogen, which is 0. Between sulfur and oxygen, is there an electronegativity difference? Yes. Between chlorine and fluorine, is there an electronegativity difference? Yes. And since there is a difference in electronegativity between sulfur and oxygen, uh, SO bonds in sulfur dioxide, they will be polar bonds. How come? See, sulfur actually would acquire delta plus charge and oxygens would acquire delta minus charge. And the moment there is a slight positive charge separated by a slight negative charge by a finite distance, we say that there is an ionic character. Yes. So what does that mean? That clearly means that sulfur dioxide, very negligibly though, but it might have occupied, it, it might have acquired some ionic character, and it does. What about ClF3? The same goes for ClF3. ClF3 also, because fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, Cl bonds are polar, chlorine atom carries a delta plus charge, and fluorine atoms carry delta minus. This also has acquired some ionic character. And what does this ionic character depend on? There are many ways in which you can do this, but for predominantly covalent molecules, you are supposed to use the electronegativity difference. And what is the electronegative difference? Greater the difference, more is the ionic character. This is something you can conveniently say. Based on that, if you judge, you would get SO2 and ClF3. The standard textbook answer released by NCERT or CBSC is simply that SO2 is less and ClF3 is more when it comes to ionic character. How they have arrived at this is highly mysterious. Why? I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Anna. The truth is this is a fairly poor question. And questions like these which are indiscriminately offered are the ones responsible for earning chemistry a bad name. But nonetheless, let's take a look. See, if you look in the textbook, Electronegativity of sulfur is around 2.58 and oxygen is close to 3.5. Chlorine is close to 3, actually it is 3.12 or something and fluorine is around 4. The difference is 0.88 between Cl and F and the difference is again 0.92 around in sulfur and oxygen. Difference is not much. And most unfortunately, the difference between electronegativities of sulfur and oxygen is a little more only as per the standard data as compared to Cl or F. Still, for strangely vague and odd reasons which are known to nobody, NCERT has declared in their own ideas this as the answer. So I am presenting this as the answer only because 
it is given in NCRT. Is it logical? No. Is it scientific? No, definitely not to the best of my knowledge and which is not that bad, right? So this is, again, personally, I feel they should not have given this, but because they have, and this is the answer they are giving, I'm presenting you with the answer and the logic which they give is electronegativity difference. Unfortunately, that itself gives you the opposite answer. Anyways, whatever. This is the way they write it. I am putting a question mark because I don't like it. This, don't say that I have done this. This is CBSE's job. And then, <clears throat> you're criticizing CBSE? Of course I am. They're such a bunch of stupid people. Come on, they're great. They may be great. They may be Einstein's for all I know. But truth is that such things, I mean, playing around with chemistry, not taking subjects seriously, I don't like. That's why I get irritated. About this LIF and K2O also. I'll tell you the standard CBC answer. It is K2O is less as compared to LIF. The logic which they offer is that the difference in electronegativity between lithium and fluorine. Fluorine has electronegativity of 4 and lithium is 0.98, around 1. The difference in electronegativity is around 3. Oxygen is 3.5 and potassium would be around 0.8. So between 3.5 and 0.8, the difference is not as much. So since the difference in electronegativities of potassium and oxygen is not as much, it is less ionic and difference is more in lithium fluoride, so this is more ionic. So at least this is, although this is not great because, again, let me tell you, this is the NCRT answer. Since it is NCRT answer, I have presented this with a warning. What? When you talk about percentage ionic character for predominantly ionic molecules, you use Fayance rules. Fayance rules will be very vague in this case and they will not give you any sensible answer. Electronegativity difference is used only for polar covalent bonds, which ideally we should not have used, but in case you use it, at least you get an answer. If you use that criteria here also, you get nothing. Actually, you get an opposite thing, but again, this is the standard NCRT answer. So, and I, they'll give you marks only when you repeat what they say. So I'm giving you a slightly unscientific answer. My appeal to NCRT would be that whenever you revise your text next time, remove such questions, or at least improve them, uh, you know, remove the inconsistencies. That should be all.